Hello, crafty friends. My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And it is time for another oh so inspired collaboration. I hope you'll stick around to see who's going to inspire us this month and see what I'm going to create. Thanks so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. It's the 20th of the month, which means it is time for another Oh So Inspired collaboration. If you're new to my channel or new to this collaboration, I have a team of awesome creators who stops by once a month to share their take on the same inspiration piece. Now to see what the rest of the team has created today, you can click on the hashtag in the title, but if that's not working, which it has been acting up, I will add all the videos as soon as I can to the playlist linked in the description box and all of the collaboration team channels are also down there in the description box. I know that they're all going to love for you to stop by, see what they created and leave them some love. Up on screen now is a look at the card that we're each going to be taking inspiration from this month. It was originally created by Christina who is at La Cristinelle on Instagram. Now I will have the original blog post and the Instagram post if I can find it linked in the description box below. Make sure to go and leave the original creator some love as well. Now, if you're inspired to create something based upon today's piece, I do have some hashtags down in the description box that we would love for you to use so we can see what you've created. For my card today, I was really inspired by that background of diamonds, but I actually created my own cut file with hexagons that I will be using. And if you're a channel member, I'll tell you at the end of the video how you can download it to use it for yourself. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started today by doing some ink blending. I pre-cut two pieces of white cardstock that were five and a quarter by six and a half. And to get those measurements, I just added one inch to each measurement of the card front so that when I take it to my silhouette later, I can cut it out of the center of this and it will allow for any borders that the silhouette has. For my ink blending today, I chose a bright pink and a bright blue, and I'm blending in from opposite ends so it kind of fades to almost white in the center. Once I had that piece ink blended, I took my SVG file into my Silhouette software and I placed two copies onto the 12 by 12 mat. I kind of did these in opposite corners just so I knew if I aligned each corner on the sides that it would cut where I needed it to. Now, hindsight's 2020. I should not have cut yet because I wanted to do some ink splattering on these, but we are going to make it work. I carefully removed each of the frames and the hexagon pieces from the mats and for the ink blended one I put it back together on a, just a piece of recycled paper. Then that got placed inside the box so I could do my splattering. Over the weekend I attended Virtual Stamp Joy and we splattered a lot so I was in the mood. I am using for the white Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and then I use the same pink and blue inks that I did for blending the background. For the white I splattered it all over and then when I went to do the inks I tried to contain the blue ink up where the blue was ink blended and the pink ink at the bottom. To get each of the colors to move a little better, I did add some water from a pipette and then I used my splatter brush. I either tapped on it or tapped it on my finger until I thought I had nice coverage and then I set this to the side to dry. 
While that was drying, I pieced back together the white die cut copy inside of a dots embossing folder. I thought just adding some embossing to this would add a little bit more texture and break up all of that white. After the splattered piece was all dry, I brought in a couple top fold card bases and now I'm going to adhere each of the frames to the front. Now the overall size of this is the same size as an A2 card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. To add the frames, I'm gonna be using my art glitter glue in the fine tip bottle. Not only will this give me a little bit of wiggle room to get this placed on the card front, but I can get it into those tiny spots. I did a line around the outside edge and then a dot where each of the hexagons met the other. And then I carefully placed it onto my card front. You will see I had to pull it back up and adjust it a little bit, but finally I got it all aligned and I did that same thing with the white copy and let these dry for a little bit. After the glue was dry, I brought back in the hexagon pieces and inlaid each of those into the opposite color. So you'll see here I'm placing the ink blended hexagons into the white frame and then later I'll do vice versa. Now I did adhere all of mine flat down. You might notice that on the original piece she popped each of those shapes up. I just thought that this was easier and I knew that later I wanted to give a little dimension with the sentiment. But feel free to pop up all the sections or maybe just a few. While those pieces were drying, I made and gathered some items for the focal point. The little sentiments on the flags were some I already had pre-stamped and cut. I also cut a vellum stitch circle and I die cut the word hello once from a colored cardstock and twice from white and layered those together. I will be placing the blue hello where the pink is on top and the pink hello where the blue is on top. These are the same color cardstocks as the ink I used before. Now for a little dimension on the sentiment strip, I place some foam tape behind each one and this is from my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width. To add the hello piece to the front of the card, I'm going to be using that same art glitter glue in the fine tip bottles. And I try to keep the glue right behind the thicker parts of the die cut word to hide that as best as I can. Now while that's drying underneath a block, I pulled off the release tape on the sentiment strips and got those added to the front as well. Off camera, I added some glitter enamel dots, cleaned off my blending brushes on the inside of the card for a little added color, and stamped my personalized stamp on the back of each one. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Christina to create these two quick and easy cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators videos either by using the hashtag in the title or the links in the description box. And if you are a channel member, here is how you are going to get the SVG file if you want to make cards similar to this. This file is free for personal use only, and I will be posting a link later this morning over on the membership tab, and it will also be uploaded to the monthly blog page. If you do have any questions on how to get that, feel free to reach out. My email address is always at the bottom of the description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.